All right, uh, welcome everybody to this tech talk. My name is Simon Auer. I'm the CEO of Markably, and we're a software development agency based in Vienna. We develop unique solutions for remarkable brands, and our clients range from um, up and coming startups uh, to uh, family businesses um, and up to multinational corporations and brands. We develop applications on a very high level. And no matter how big or small the projects or clients are, quality and maintainability are always the top priority. All right. So this is why today we're going to talk about automated testing. And when I speak of automated testing, I don't mean like the usual manual testing through your software, just going through every single bit of features um, whenever you change something on the code. What I mean is a pr the process of writing code that automatically tests and checks every feature and implementation you've ever written, ideally. And this to prevent upcoming uh, problems right before they get de deployed. After having worked on more than 150 projects and uh, like really having a lot of experience with all that development stuff, um, I can really tell you tests are important for every project and for every size of projects because you don't want to invest too much time to write your tests. You don't want to invest too much time on testing the application every single time and human mistakes can happen. But sadly, a lot of companies still don't do testing right. Um, even some agencies don't do it. Most of the time they don't do it because they don't want to invest time in writing the tests, which is, I have to say, more time you have to invest, but also a lot of times because just they don't know how. And this is exactly why today I want to show how easy and fun it is to do testing with Flutter. And if you're not a Flutter guy or if a girl, and if, or if you don't know anything about Flutter, it's not a problem because the concepts, the rules, and even the syntax is very similar in a lot of languages. So you might feel home right away. All right. So let's jump right into it. And we jump into the why, the when, the different types of tests and how it's done. The first and obvious reason, let's start with the why. Uh, the first and obvious reason is um, quality. Um, why should you make tests? Uh, in regards to quality, tests will help you, first of all, to check all cases of your applications at all times. By that I mean, just think of an example. You're implementing a feature or a, a, a method, and this method has different cases it has to adhere to. And you write everything, it works perfectly, you write 10 different cases, everything is perfectly fine. But at some point, you have to implement the 11th feature, and this might break the other 11 that you've already tested and worked. And now you can either test everything by hand every single time, or what's even better is you can run your automatic tests whenever you make a change to your code base, whenever you make a, cha a change to something else, a feature, or somebody else makes a change to your code base, um, it will test every single bit at the same time. So if something fails, if you break something that you've already developed successfully, you will know about it immediately and you will know where to stop and where to continue. Second of all, it's also a lot less manual testing. When you have automatic testing in place, um, you have an amazing situation because you don't have to manually test every single change. You can just let the automatic testing do every single, uh, like uh, on every deployment. And only if this is perfectly fine, only if all tests pass through, you do the manual testing. And by this, you can save a lot of rounds and, and going back and forth. And ideally, if you do the manual testing afterwards and you've done the tests right, everything will be perfect anyway. Third, you spend more time thinking about edge cases. By that I mean like just thinking about tests leads to thinking more about problems that might occur in your application. And this might lead you to find tests or even edge cases that you haven't thought about just because you have to deal more with the code base itself. And fourth, and this is one of my favorite, refactoring is just a lot nicer with testing. The amazing thing is whenever you do the testing um, uh, and refactoring, uh, you actually, most of the time when you refactor, you don't want to change the output or change the input. You just want to uh, change the way the code is structured, the code is written. But output and input should stay the same. So if you write perfect tests, you can just 
change everything in the middle, but you can still expect to be the output the same. And if you uh, destroy something or if you do something that's not right, you will know about it immediately in the test. And fifth, you can prevent problems from dependencies. So basically something that usually happens, just think of the situation, you're in a team, you write some code, you're on holiday for two weeks and after you come back, something doesn't work because somebody wrote or changed a method that you use in your codes because they needed it differently. With tests, this cannot happen because they will be informed immediately that they broke something in your code part and have to either fix it or fix the tests, which usually shouldn't happen. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, these are just some of the reasons. There are definitely a lot more and uh, you might say that, yeah, why should I? I have testers. And if you want to say that, I have to say congratulations, that's amazing. But you should still do automatic testing because it will save your testers time and sometimes testers can't find uh, certain edge cases. Maybe they just didn't think about them. Maybe they don't have enough internal information about the problem and the structure of your code to know about these edge cases at all. So if you combine these two, if you have very good automated testing and you also test your application manually, what can go wrong? And this is the situation that we strive to try. The next reason, and this is an easy one, is confidence. Um, it's just so nice to be able to just deploy your application and just not think about it, even if it's a staging. You just deploy it and if it passes, everything is good or hopefully good. And if it doesn't pass, yeah, you might have to do something, but you get immediate feedback and you don't have to worry other, people's with, uh, other people with it. And yeah, I don't have to say anything more about confidence. It's just amazing. And last but not least, documentation. And to be honest, this is one of my personal favorites about testing. And this is something that's overlooked very often because there are awesome ways of documenting code, but tests are just something directly in the code. Um, so the amazing thing is if done right, tests are an, a perfect example of how to um, show the, uh, basically how to use a method. If you look at the code on the site, you see immediately, you see how to use a method, widget or feature. You see what to expect as a result and also what kind of variants and different combinations are possible. Just looking at this code here, you see this is a, a method that uh, basically takes a URL string and parses it into an object of different URL parts. And it's just there. You just see it immediately, you input a string and you get a path and, and so on. Amazing, right? <laughs> I know. Perfect. Uh, so, all right. Um, now that we know why, let's take a look at the when to write tests. And I mean, actually, after hearing all of that, the question is not so much when, but when not. So I would personally say the only time when you really can go through with not writing any tests is if you know your code will never be touched again, ever. Because whenever you change something, you need some backup especially if you don't change the code that often, because I hear this a lot, people saying, I don't, I don't want to make changes uh, too often anyway, but this is exactly why you want tests, because you will not remember when was the last time you changed something or how did that work. With tests, you can make sure that this knowledge is basically provided by the system and always checked. So yeah, we don't really need uh, tests this is something you, uh, people really say often, but the simple is answer is you need them. And I have to admit, this goes even when saying like, and this is something I just want to say up front, it takes longer to write tests. So when you implement features with tests, you will probably need around 30 to 40% more time for that. Yeah, that's guaranteed. But in the long run, um, you will save thousands of hours just for not having to check, just for not having to um, go over it again, just for not having to work into it after somebody de uh, detects a bug. And this is something that's really worthwhile. All right. And now let's see what kind of tests we can implement in Flutter. Um, we're taking Flutter here because it's just a very modern framework. Um, if you work with Angular, with Vue, with um, React, um, it's very similar. The cool thing about Flutter is everything is baked 
uh, and built in from the start. It's included in the framework. So let's quickly talk about uh, something that we call the testing pyramid. Um, the testing pyramid basically is a structure that just tells us there are different tests and some of these tests are harder to implement and some of them are easier to implement. And so basically you want to have a kind of a structure that balances this out. Of course, there's a lot more tests uh, than we show here, like ac accessibility tests, uh, acceptance, performance tests, and so on and so on. But today we will focus on three major tests that we often use in Flutter. Um, our pyramid basically shows us, like, if you go up, um, you see basically the more expensive it gets and the less or lower it is, uh, the less expensive it is. Which means I should focus on tests that are on the bottom first and then go up as much as possible. So if I, if I don't have any time, it's good to make the tests on the first level and otherwise I just start with the next one. So today we'll talk about three kinds of tests. Unit tests, um, which are very easy to implement, very fast to implement um, and also to maintain and therefore are rather cheap and quickly to do. Then we'll talk about widget tests. They are also not that hard to implement, but like sometimes they need a little, little bit of maintenance. And the third ones that we talk about are integration tests. These are like the super thing that you want, but they might be complicated and maybe not be ideal for all situations. So let's talk about unit tests. Um, yeah, unit tests are actually used to test classes, services, um, and functions. And basically everything that has a calculatable input and results in an output, like a black box. Uh, they are very simple, they're fast, they're clean, and they're readable. Um, and they should be independent. So the important thing about unit tests is they should only focus on the unit they are testing. So the function, the method, the class, nothing else. Um, and one important thing that I always notice is don't write implementation logic to test your implementation logic. This is something that happens a lot. People writing tests and for that test they need other logic and then they test the logic again and this creates a vicious circle. Um, an ex a good example for uh, like a, a test unit test would be a, a multiply method or something. Just a method you pass to numbers, they will be multiplied and give a result. Just easy, but just as an example. All right, next level, widget tests. Widget tests um, are basically a test for your UI or the way your application feels. So you test widgets and UI components. In React, you might call, or React Angular, you might call them components. In Flutter, they're called widgets. Um, and the thing about widget tests is they're also independent. You test your widget or your components, nothing else. But also here, don't create new widgets just to test your widget. Happens a lot, uh, not very safe. And in Flutter, there's actually also the concept of golden tests. Um, golden tests are an amazing feature. They basically allow you to take a snapshot of how a widget looks exactly pixel by pixel and compare them every single time you make changes. We will not focus on them today, uh, but you should definitely take a look at them. Um, so in widgets, uh, the, the widgets tests we use right now are more focused not so much on exactly what color the button has or the, the widget has, but like what the widget really does. And an example of that would like uh, seen here be a button. Perfect. Third level, integration tests. And integration tests, like I said, are amazing. Um, they really, really are cool. Integration tests allow you to automatically swipe and click and touch and pan and pin through your application, switch screens and basically test whole workflows. So the idea is that I can really say, okay, open the app in an emulator, um, click on this button, scroll down until you see this element, then click on this element and you can just see if everything works. Basically what you would do as a human tester or a manual tester all, all along. And it will just try to do exactly that. And you can even, I will show you in a second, even open it up in an emulator and just watch the uh, application or the test system do uh, whatever you want it to do. Uh, but the problem with these tests is since they're interconnected with all the different elements, all the different widgets, all the different services, they are a little bit more complicated because if one of these components change, you have to change the process, you have to change the test. 
And this is why we usually like try to do it as little as possible, only for very big features or very important features in the application. Similar uh, syntax wise, it's very similar to widget tests. That's a good thing. Um, and it also needs the integration package and uh, the integration test package of Flutter. So um, every, all the other tests are already baked into Flutter. You can just run them with your Flutter create command, but um, these tests, you just need to install a package. It takes two seconds, but you still have to do it. And for example, a good example for this would be uh, a login workflow. So you can really test, user opens the app, goes on the login screen, enters data, clicks the button, gets a error, uh, types the, or adds the correct data, gets signed in. All right, now that we have looked at the different types of tests, let's get three more general tips and then we implement them together. So just some small tips. Here we are. Uh, first of all, naming convention. It's very, very important in all systems that you code that you adhere to naming conventions. In Flutter, the naming convention for tests is very simple. You basically add the test prefix to the file name. So if I have a widget called my widget, I would call the test my widget underscore test dot dart and uh, that you put the uh, tests inside of the test folder. So there's a lib folder for your normal code and there's a test folder for your tests. Um, second of all, and this is more a very strong recommendation is to follow the AAA pattern. Um, we will see later how that works, but basically what it means is your test implementation is split into three parts. The first one is arrange. The second one um, is act and assert. And the third one is assert. Arrange basically means you do everything you need to prepare for a test. You don't really do a testing, you just prepare. So you define variables, um, you set some um, information, you get maybe uh, data or prepare data, just so you have it ready when you want to do the test. The act step basically performs the action you want to do. So you call the method you want, you render something you want, you click a button and so on and so on. And the third step assert basically means you check on the result. So you set your expectations, um, you set everything up, you act on it, you call the method to do that, and then afterwards you check, did it really do what I wanted it to do? Very simple. And the third point is try to do test-driven development. It's, it's a very cool uh, term that flows around all the time and everybody wants to do it. Um, and you can't always do it, I have to admit that. But um, what test-driven development basically means is you don't just write your application and two months later you just decide, oh, I'm going to add some tests now, but you really write the tests while you develop the application. Or even better, you write the tests before you uh, create the application. That means you go ahead and if I want to implement a, a method, I will not write the method and then test the method. I will write the expected result. I will tell the system what I expect the result to be and then I start the implementation. And the cool thing is that you will see First of all, how your test changes, but you will also see that if your test fails and then is accepted that you did something right. Because in some cases you forget to test the negative result, you just test, ah, oh, it's there, perfect. But it could, there could be cases where it's always positive or false positive. All right, so now that we got this covered, let's finally jump to the code and see what tests look like. All right, so here we are. Um, we got a very, very simple Flutter example application here. Um, our application basically consists of our code and on the right side, I've opened an Android emulator. The cool thing about Flutter is it works on all platforms. So you write code once and you can use it on almost every device. Um, in this case, I'm going to use Android just because it's very simple and it allows us to work side on side. Um, as you can see, I've we created a very, very simple application. What it does is it contains um, just a search field on the top and on the, on the bottom, it should show some search results. So I'm a very, uh, I'm a person who loves fruits. So I made a list of fruits. So here I can, for example, search for a banana or a strawberry, oh, sorry, banana. Um, and it, I will just find some fruits. So it's very, very simple. If I write berry, I can find berries. If I don't enter anything, it will show me this mask, please enter a search term. So like I said, very, very simple application. We're not going to go too much into detail about it uh, because we want to see tests. But 
to be able to see the tests, I just want to show you the uh, widgets that we have. We have one super search widget. Uh, the super search widget is basically the whole thing here that shows the, uh, uh, the application. And then we have the, for us, important widget, which is called super search results. And what this uh, widget does is basically just, it gets a query, so a search term or something. And if the search term is empty, it will show a text in the middle with the text, please enter a search term. If it's not empty, we will call this method, get search results, uh, to get the results that we want for this specific term here. And then we will just show this in a list. So not too much magic, it's very, very simple. And of course, we want to test it. So let's get started. Um, I would say let's start with exactly the same order that we defined before. So let's start with the simplest test, which is unit tests. A unit test, as you remember, is um, or can be used to test methods, classes, uh, functions, and stuff like that. And what a coincidence, we have a method here. Get search results. So um, as you can see, also this method is very, very simple. Uh, basically, the only thing it does is it gets the query, which is a string, a search term, and it loops through our items, which we hard coded here. And it will just filter them if the type, basically the item contains the search term. Nothing more. So this should be easy to test. Now, if I want to test this, remember, I have to create a file um, with the extension, basically same name as this one with the extension uh, or the postfix uh, test, and I have to save it in the test folder. Um, usually it's also done like this. As you can see here, I have a hierarchy. Um, usually we'll try to keep the same hierarchy as you have in the lib folder. So I have the lib folder and I have my test folder, and they should have the same structure. So if I have a file that's called services here, uh, or get search results here, I should have a file services get search results test here. There's one more special tip here. Um, VS Code actually has a very nice feature about that um, in the Flutter DevTools, um, which is basically just a command go to test implementation file. So if I call the search anywhere, I add this arrow uh, and then I search for go to test, um, it will offer me to create or it will automatically go to the right test. So right now I already created it, it will go there directly. But if it's not created yet, it will ask me to create it with a correct name, with a correct file name, and folder location. To make, keep this a little bit shorter, I actually wrote the test already and just uncommented it. Um, so we're just going to go through it together. But the first thing you can see already is that we have the AAA uh, pattern here in included. So I have three parts, arrange, act, and assert. So this is exactly what I meant. It's not really a, like a, a hard-coded pattern or something that's very important to always keep, but it's nice to have it as a guideline. So in this case, we start with arranging our test. So every test looks like this. We have a, a main method, and this main method has a test method inside, and this test method has two properties. So I have the property here, which is just a description of the test. This is only used when I run the test to show me which test failed or passed. Um, but please try to keep this as descriptive as possible because the better your description here is, the better the documentation for your code. The second part is the methods that actually like calls our or runs our test. So in here, we implement how our test should work. Let's start with arranging. Uh, the first thing we do is we just hard code a uh, a search query. So we just define a value that we want to use later. And like I said, in the arrange part, we just set the test up. We don't do anything. We just prepare everything that we need later. This next part is we want to act. So now we want to tell the application to actually run this method and just do its magic. We don't know exactly what the search method does or the test doesn't need to know what the get search results method does, but it will just run it and save the result in results. And the third thing is, now that we put the data there, and now that we actually got the result, we do the assertion. So basically, we tell the system, now that you've run the um, get search results query with the term Barry, um, we expect you to return strawberries and raspberries, because these are the two berries that match the, uh, the filter request. And that's it. Basically, that's our first test. It just works like that. And this is the amazing thing about Flutter, and this is the amazing thing about writing tests in Flutter, 
it's just it's so easy to read and so nice. And like I said, here you have a perfect documentation of the method get search results. You know what to pass, you know what to expect if you pass it. And if we run this whole thing, um, and which there are many ways to do that in VS Code, um, like here, run, here, run, and other ways as well, um, we will just see if we go to this testing tab. So of course, bad example because now everything runs already. Uh, let's just fail it on purpose for now, which you should always do to make sure that your tests really run. And now if I run the test, and now of course it should fail because I'm looking for a word that it can't find and it doesn't match, match our expectations. As you can see, Flutter is really, really nice and helps us out. It tells us this test failed. You can see this by the red X here. It, we expected strawberries and raspberries to be returned. But in reality, nothing was returned because I looked for a term that didn't exist. And this helps me because now I can see, okay, why doesn't this work? I can check around, I can re-implement this or do whatever I want. In this case, I know the solution. I just have to add the berries here. So if I save this and if I run the test again, now everything should be turned green and everything's fine. And this is the best feeling in the world if just the tests always are green. Awesome, perfect. So we got our first test, uh, simple, right? Let's step it up a notch. Um, now we tested um, basically this method here, our unit test. Let's jump to the second level, which is widget test. So I've checked this here, but now I want to make sure that I, I really, like this widget, the super search uh, results widget, really works as I expect it to. How do I go to the test? Very simple, I'll just do the search anywhere and I go to the test file and it will automatically open the right uh, file in the right location. And here for this, we got two tests now because we want to make it a little bit more challenging. So basically, um, as you remember, the workflow in the application is that if no search term is given, I have this please enter search term field. And if I enter something, I get a list of results. So we want to check these two cases. What happens if my search term is empty? What happens if my search term um, contains something? So let's go. The first test we do is um, we want to see if the instructions are shown if no query is given. So to do that, we will again define a main method in our test file. And this main method this time will not contain a test method like this, like we did with um, our unit test. But since we need a little bit more of a setup uh, for, to render widgets, we actually need to use a different method. But simply enough, it's just called test widgets. Um, it expects the same parameters. Basically, first parameter is a description of the test. And the second one is a method that will be called to run the test. The only difference here is that this time I get a tester uh, parameter in my method, in my callback. And what I will do right now is in the first step of arranging, I already use this tester to pump a widget. What this means is basically you tell Flutter to not to basically take a, a widget or a component, in this case, the super search results wrapped by two or three other widgets, um, and just paint it on an invisible canvas in the background. So you will just tell Flutter not to just do something, but in this case, you need to set it up because you can't tell it to click a button or do something if it's not there. So pump widget basically brings your, or, uh, brings your, or makes your uh, widget alive. With that said, um, this test is rather simple, so we will probably not do too much more, but we, uh, so we won't need any act basically, but we will just jump right to the assertion because we pass here already the empty query, which means we can just say, okay, Flutter, now take this super search results widget and render it with an empty uh, query. And with that in mind, uh, we can just do the test and just ask Flutter, what do we expect now? What do we expect if we uh, pass an uh, empty query? And in this case, um, usually you would just expect an array, a string, or something as a result, but this is not possible here. So what we need to do here is we need to look for smaller cues in our UI, what has changed or what hasn't changed. In this case, I want to look for this term, please enter a search term. And there's a find method provided by Flutter test which allows us to look for different things on the screen. So we can just basically look through the screen and find things that we need. In this case, we're just looking for text. So I can say find text 
and I'm looking for exactly this text. And the basically the assertion that I want to make is this text should exist once in, in the whole widget that I'm testing right now. I can also use different things here, for example. I can use uh, find widget, which is multiple widgets. I can also say find a specific number of widgets. But in this case, I just want to say I only want to find one. I can also say find nothing. So with that in mind, if I run this test, what Flutter will do here is it will take the super results widget. It will put it into like, let's just say an emulated or hidden um, screen, render it there. And then afterwards we will say, okay, Flutter, now that you've rendered this uh, widget with an empty query, is there actually a, a search, like the, the text, please enter search text. And if that's true, uh, our test will pass. Again, let's just change our test and make it break just to test it. Like I said, always a good behavior. Oh yes, it fails. It just tells us uh, we expected exactly one widget in the tree, but it couldn't find any. So zero widgets were found. To fix that, again, we just have to go ahead and put this in there, run the test, and everything is green again. The second test is very similar. And we'll just quickly cover it. So basically, I have a test that uh, wants to test if we see the search results if the string is not uh, empty or if the query is not empty. So what I would do again is exactly the same as before. In this test, I will create a new screen. I will render my super search results uh, widget. This time, though, with um, a query. So this time, it's not empty. This time, I have an E in there because I'm pretty sure that we can find at least one result with that. And then again, we act on it and use the find method um, or assert on it. And we will use the find method to try to find hints of what we're looking for. In this case, if I look here, I should have two elements. And if I check my uh, super results uh, screen, I see that we are doing a list view. Basically, we're rendering out a list view. And in this list view, we have for every single item a list tile. And this is the name of the widget. So the method I will use for now is not search for text because I don't know what will come out. I will search for a widget by a specific type, which is called list type. So I will check, is there at least one list tile uh, in my uh, widget output? And if that's true, again, it will work out and everything will be good. So we got the two tests. Um, let's now go to the final and last test. Uh, this one is a little bit more complicated, like I said, um, and it's a little bit of a special one. To show you how it works, I actually want to show you what it does in the beginning. So um, to make sure that we include it in a different uh, like build pipeline, because they are more expensive to run, because it will really run on a headless a Chrome or even an emulator in your deployment pipeline, uh, we usually put them in different folders. So we have our normal tests here and the very resource intensive tests we have in integration test. So if I go to this uh, test, as you can see in a different library, and run this test, this time I will not just see um, simple elements or just a green arrow or something, but this time it will really try to build my application. So as you can see, my application is being built. This is the test doing that. It's going in there. It's basically typing something into the search field and finding the results and then testing it through like a human would do, like a human would just go in there and test stuff. And the way this works is, again, the cool thing is it's very similar uh, to how our uh, widget tests work. Again, I have a main method. In this main method, I have my test widgets method that we know already. And the only differences are that this time I'm grouping this whole test as well, just to keep it cleaner. Um, but I can also do this with the other test. It's not a problem. I'm just showing it here. and this is the important part to make it an integration test. So basically, I run this method, which ensures that everything is initialized, which Flutter really needs to show something. It makes sure that the application is installed. It makes sure that it, it runs and that a real application is run and not just in the background somewhere. Um, then the whole thing is very similar. I pump my widget, just like in the widget test. This time, for the uh, like to make it easier, basically, I'm just rendering the whole my app, not just one widget. Um, I'm defining the search term again, and then I'm checking again if I can't find um, a list tile in this case. So I just want to check the result if no screen, no search term was entered. 
Um, then I will call the enter text method, which basically finds a specific widget, enters code in there just like a human would do, and then the important thing is to pump and settle. So if you change the state of the uh, widget, it wouldn't change, like nothing would be ch different. But with pump and settle, I can tell Flutter, okay, I've changed something, now re-render the, the UI so that I can see something. And yeah, then it's very simple. We're at the assertion level now. And here I just check, is there a widget uh, in, in my application if I entered the search term? And yeah, this is basically just to show off. Um, you can also make sure that elements are visible. So let's just say you have something, uh, an element that's on the bottom or three swipes away. You can just make sure that Flutter knows, okay, this element has to be visible because I want to tap it or do something. And the same happens here. So I can tap it again, like with the system. I can just go from one link to the other. But the amazing thing about this is it's super simple. Like I said, it's just like you would explain to somebody how to perform this action when testing manually. So uh, if you see this, like you can basically really almost read it. I can just say, okay, go ahead. And I have to know the pump widget means make a widget, but then I know, okay, go in there and enter some text. Then go in there and ensure that this element is visible on the screen right now and then tap this element. So all the elements are really, really easy to get and the writing tests is just a lot of fun. And just to make sure that everything works, we can run all of our tests and we will see, hopefully, everything will be green. And this is the goal we have with, it, with our application. Oh, and we broke something. Oh no, sorry, this is, this is the standard test. We ignore this for now. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, so this is basically how to test. And these are the amazing um, hacking pictures I tried to find. All right, so like that was our talk about automated testing in Flutter. Um, if you like that, if you want to hear more, um, or if you know everything already, and you just want to show us how you do it, um, or you have any feedback, I would love to hear about it. On the bottom left, um, you have a link to the repository where you can download the code that we just talked about today and play around with it. And yeah, apart from that, we would love to hear from you. Um, let me know. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>